Howdy. Well, since I've been showing off pistols and rifles of late, I thought I would uh, put out one that's uh, pretty representative of one army uh, circa the 1950s. And this was what you would expect to see if you were in French Indochina and working for the French Foreign Legion. You were probably a former member of the uh, Waffen-SS uh, hiding out in the French Foreign Legion uh, to try and avoid uh, being prosecuted for war crimes. Now, if you've served in the French Foreign Legion, uh, you get a new name, and upon uh, uh, release after uh, uh, good service, you get a uh, French passport and uh, citizenship, and therefore your past is completely expunged. So it was a very nice uh, uh, thing that a lot of uh, uh, Germans liked to uh, do back then. Of course, at the time, you were being thrown into the, uh, the uh, meat grinder that was Southeast Asia, uh, fighting the Viet Minh. But this is the rifle and pistol you'd probably be assigned. This is an F uh, uh, Moss 4956. This is the standard rifle of the 1950s of the French Foreign Legion. Uh, it's a, uh, uh, well, it's, it's a semi-automatic. Uh, magazine fed. It's in 7.5 uh, French. Uh, this particular one has been re reboard to uh, 308 by uh, uh, Century Arms when they imported it. Uh, by the way, if you ever have one of these and you ever have one that has been rebarreled, or even if you have an original, one thing I strongly suggest is replace your firing pin. The firing pins in a Moss 4956 is an inertial firing pin, meaning there's no spring and it just goes back and forth with uh, uh, the pressure that's on it. Well, the ammo that they were using in uh, Vietnam or <clears throat> in uh, Indochina was, uh, had extremely hard primers on it. And that was okay because it would go boink, boink, boink against the primer and do nothing until it was the, the force of the actual firing pin spring pushing it ahead. Commercial primers today, on the other hand, are not so uh, uh, hard and forgiving. And that means that uh, these things are known for uh, what's called a double tap, where you pull the trigger and expect one round to go, and it's two, uh, because it'll go bang, and then the inertia of, of the bolt going back to recycle the next round and slam forward is just enough so that that inertial firing pin goes forward and hits the next uh, uh, round being chambered and fires it as well. What you can do is buy a new firing pin that has been drilled or uh, reamed out slightly, and then uh, it has been uh, cut with a new spring on it, so that it's uh, once it, it goes back, it's held back by that spring until the firing pin spring hits it, and bang, it goes forward and uh, does what it's supposed to do. Just a suggestion, if you happen to own one of these. I did. I've, I've experienced a double tap. I didn't like it. And I found a place in Texas, a gunsmith there, that sells those things. And uh, he has excellent service because uh, <clears throat> I lost my spring. And I wrote him, and he just sent me, gratis, a new spring. Uh, that, to me, that's just exceptional service. Anyway, with this, I happen to have all the accessories that go with it. This is the uh, armorer's kit. It includes extra springs, firing pins, and, and the like, uh, and cleaning materials. You'll notice that this has a, uh, I don't know, can you see that? This has a uh, uh, grenade launcher on the front. This is the uh, included grenade launcher sight system that you would uh, slip on the thing to uh, uh, set it up. It's, uh, this is almost as rare as the gun. It's actually more rare than the gun. Uh, it's, uh, I've never seen the grenade this thing shoots, but uh, just having that is kind of a, a rarity. And this is extra ammo pouches. The uh, magazine, as you see, has a clip on the outside that uh, comes out. It's quite an interesting system. Uh, and then it has this uh, Bakelite or some other plastic uh, bolt handle, which is really, uh, uh, really interesting. <laughs> Uh, by the way, this is direct gas impingement is the system it uses, and it's uh, kind of unique. It also has uh, this rubber uh, thing for, for setting the uh, 
uh, it to, to your shoulder if you're uh, a big guy. You can get different ones of these with more, less or more padding on the back. Uh, now, as to the pistol, this is a uh, Moss 1935A. Uh, you'll notice that it looks a lot like the uh, P210 of uh, Switzerland. That's because this is the, the grandfather of the P210. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, let's see, what would you call it? It's, it's a SACM was the manufacturer. I cannot say, say that in French. But this is the mo <clears throat> model 1935A. If you were to issue that, excuse me just a moment. Let me, let me get this down. You'd be issued this. This is the substitute standard. That's a Moss or uh, M1935S. Uh, when they held a trial for the uh, pistol, this was the one who won, and this was the runner-up. Well, <clears throat> they were tooling up to make this, and they just didn't have enough. So they said, okay, just give us a whole bunch of these. <clears throat> but uh, this would be the primary. Both of these are chambered and 765 French long. It's uh, basically the exact same cartridge as 30 Peterson. It's a uh, lo slightly longer than 32 auto. It's also uh, much uh, more powerful. Uh, it's not quite as powerful as, say, 9mm, but it is a, a good, robust round. I have a few boxes of it. Uh, there are very, very few left in, around because uh, Steinels makes it, but <clears throat> a certain... Uh, a certain gun Jesus has a Moss 49 uh, submachine gun. I think it's 49 or is it 39? I forget. But he has the uh, the submachine gun made in this round. And uh, he, he bought up Steinel's whole, whole supply, it seems. I, I talked to the guy at Steinel's and he says, yeah, well, Ian bought it all. <laughs> so, oh, well, the, when they can make some more, they'll make some more. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, mean, I, I wish no ill on uh, gun Jesus. He's... Uh, It'll help me out with a lot of uh, information that I otherwise would not have, and I've bought two of his books. Uh, matter of fact, I've been a uh, uh, supporter of his, of his on Utreon for uh, uh, many years. And if you're interested, I'm on Utreon. If you look down in my description, you'll find the link. <laughs> and if you want to donate, I certainly wouldn't mind. Um, but, uh, you know... Oh, by the way, uh, I think you're supposed to say at this point, uh, like, share, and subscribe. I don't care. Do what you like. But if you want to send me loot, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> Just saying. Anyway, this is the Moss 30, uh, 4956. It was actually originally the Moss 44, <clears throat> but uh, uh, the Nazis had just won, and uh, the French sort of uh, hid the... Uh, blueprints and uh, plans and all the things for this so that uh, <clears throat> they didn't find it. And I'm glad they did because as soon as the war was over, they went to tooling up to make these again. And uh, they came up with this one, which is an approved version. And it's a much better rifle. Uh, <clears throat> when they uh, went to the FAMAS, they uh, surplused all of these. Uh, Sentry Arms bought them and imported a whole mess of them over to the U.S. And I picked one up. And I've, I've been out shooting at the range, and it's just a wonderful rifle to shoot. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, the anti-gunners would just love to get rid of this, but uh, this one's mine. I've paid for it. <clears throat> it has, as far as I know, since uh, Sentry bought it at least, not uh, been used for any kind of naughtiness. And it's been sitting in my collection, uh, gathering dust now for, uh, oh God, 20 years? For a while, and uh, I've been uh, doing my best to keep keep it up and keep things going. Anyway, and these I think are just absolutely cool. And yes, I have reloading dies for that, just you know, so I can make the uh, the rounds if I need to. So um, I'd rather get Steinels, but I can make them if I need to. <clears throat> <clears throat> 